Greetings everyone and welcome to the Global Watch. Today it's the 7th of December, 7, sorry, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, 7 a.m. in East Africa and as well and other parts of the world. Good to see you from the different time zones, Utah, Lynette, Margaret, Andre, Wendy, Pastor Michael, Joe, Ivan, Stefan, you're all most welcome. We thank God for this day and uh, being the 49th week of the year, I'll read a few verses from Psalm 49 as we open up in prayer. Psalm 49. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you for your amazing love, your amazing plan of salvation. That, that when man fell, you did not give up on him, but chose to pay him back with your precious blood. And from different nations, we are on this platform as kings and priests that you have purchased from all tribes and tongues. And Lord, we thank you for this day when we focus on Africa through the Africa Watch, but gather before you from different nations of the earth. So we commit this gathering to you and the leading of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will lead us in your way. We thank you as well for our speaker and the different people that will lead in prayer response, Lord, that to guide each one by your spirit. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I'll read Psalm 49. from verse one to 15. And one of the things it talks about is the instruction of the Lord, one of the things. So as we prepare our hearts to hear God's word, I'll read Psalm 49 from verse one. Hear this all peoples, give ear all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the heart. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit. For he sees wise men die, likewise the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever. They are dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor does not remain, is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Like sheep they are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Amen. The cost... Yes, that's what I wanted to read that 
Passo 6. Runs with the redemption of the soul is costly. Verse 8. The redemption of the soul is costly. And we thank God for his redemption for our souls. What good is it for a man to gain the whole earth but then lose his soul? And the Lord has paid the cost for each of our souls. So, Lord, we continue to thank you for the sacrifice you gave that we may have life. May we receive instruction this morning. May our hearts be in tune to hear your voice and be stirred to action. We thank you, Lord, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome once again. And at the Africa Watch this morning, we have our own sister from South Africa, Shali Mombag, is going to be sharing with us. She's not, she's not a new person on the Global Watch. She's the founder of Prophecy Matters and global prophetic leadership, a prophetic strategist, writer, speaker, and intercessor. She has earned her doctor of philosophy degree in ministry and has a master's degree in business. She's recognized as a strong prophetic voice that is relevant both to the church and the marketplace. And you can get to learn more through our YouTube channel, Prophecy Matters. So welcome with me, give an African welcome to Shali Mombag. You're welcome, Shali. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are all well. Um, what a delight yesterday when I got a, um, a note from, from Edward to share this morning, this is this is quite exciting. And in fact, yesterday morning, on my heart, I actually was thinking about the about the Africa Watch. I, I don't get to go on as often as I'd like to, but um, and I love to prepare presentations. I'm very visual, so um, you know I love the whole presenting thing. But there wasn't time to do that. But what I um, which is great. What does God say? We've got to be ready in season and out of season, right? And so I was waiting on the Lord saying, Lord, what, what is on your heart? And I felt the Lord say, the healing of the nations. And so I'm going to start with a, um, a song, which is called Rapha, as in Jehovah Rapha, which is about healing. And then I'm going to take you um, into a very short journey of the 54 nations in South Africa. And it was a 54 um, day of prayer for every Africa. single, what Not did South I say? You said South Africa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can have it. Thank you, Joe. Um, 54 days of prayer for every nation in Africa, which was amazing, absolutely amazing. And it finished just um, about a week and a half ago. And so that really impressed. I'm going to just take you through. I've got the whole PDF document. I won't be able to put it on here, but I can put it in the chat if anybody wants it afterwards. Okay, so let us let us worship. Let us. Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, flowing with water clear as crystal, continuously pouring out from the throne of God and of the lamb. The river was flowing. Sure. There is such an incredible presence of the Lord right now. Let's just take a moment. Oh, Lord. Father, we just, right now, Lord, we just take a moment, Lord, to just look to you. Lord, we lay down every burden, every care. 
we humble ourselves, Father. And we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your Logos word. We thank you for your Rhema word. We thank you for your heart for Africa, God. Wow, okay. Let me try that again. <laughs> the river was flowing in the middle of the street of the city, and on either side of the river was the tree of life with its 12 kinds of ripe fruit according to each month of the year. The leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations and every curse will be broken and no longer exist for the throne of God and of the lamb will be there in the city. His loving servants will serve him they will see constantly his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They never need the light of the sun or of a lamp because the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign as kings forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, these words are entirely trustworthy and true for the Lord the God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his loving ser servants what must occur swiftly. And I just, I just want to draw your attention back to verse number two, where it says the river was flowing in the middle of the street of the city. Listen, and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Here it is, with its 12 kinds of ripe fruit according to each month. So, you know, we keep thinking that it's going to be um, fruit every month. No, uh, according to each kind, its kind, each month. So that's new fruit each month on each side. Amen. So what I want to do now is show you something that I've been a part of. Let me is that yep share there we go. Ah just gonna move that there and move this. Oh I can do that. Okay I'm just talking to myself as I'm busy navigating here. Um just trying to see that what you see. Okay so this was a um from the 26th of September until the 18th of November, there was an initiative of 54 days of prayer for the healing of Africa. And every morning we received a page of every single country in Africa. And this woman who, who put it together is just absolutely remarkable how, how God just gave her this heart. And I'm going to... Let me do that and go to one page because I'm sure some, some of you might be looking or you might be on your one, one page. Right, there we go. What I found interesting with this is this is the colonial map of Africa. Now, some of you may have already seen this and you, you, you are well aware of this. I, I had not seen this before that all the areas in orange is where Britain colonized Africa. Let me make this bigger. Let me see if I can make it bigger. I'm gonna make it too big, too small, should I say? Yeah, no. Um, the blue is France. Look how much of Africa France actually colonized. The yellow is where Portugal came in and colonized. Green is Germany. Spain is the Burgundy. Belgium is the gray. Isn't this interesting that right in the center, the Democratic of the Republic of Congo, 
that whole area. I don't know why that's just standing out to me. Purple is Italy. I don't know if you can all see the colors. And Netherlands is black, dark gray. That's where they, they colonized. And um, the pink is, is Egypt. And the gray area, there's one area left that was never colonized. And that is Ethiopia and Liberia. The rest of Africa was plundered. It was plundered. She was plundered. Let's get going here. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to go into one page, page display, single page. Sorry, just give me a second. Yeah, I do apologize. Um, page view. Maybe just fit. There we go. Fit. No. Some of you are probably better than this with me. Actual size. Okay. Yes, Algeria. Um, and, and I'm not going to go. There's, there's 54 of them. Is there anybody on here from, um, from Nigeria? Uh, Algeria, excuse me. Algeria. Uh, Michael, you're Nigeria, right? Or Algeria? Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay, great. So this this was colonized by France. So there's no. I'm, I'm going to stop on the countries where there are representatives here today, and then we have Angola. Um, yeah, I can try and anyway. We have Angola. And there's all the prayer points, personal. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the group. So if you're interested in that, there's Benin, Angola. Anybody from Angola? Just stop me if if, if I go past it too quickly. Benin. Um let me do that. And just give me one second. There we go. Sorry, it's, it's not very, very big on your screen. And um, there's Benin, whoa, going too fast there. Um, Botswana, anybody from Botswana? Burkina Faso. I'm sorry if I butchered their name. <laughs> Burundi. Cabo Verde. Cameroon. Central African Republic. Chad. Comoros. The Republic of Congo. Democratic. Republic of Congo. Okay, I'm going to butcher this. I so, I'm so sorry. Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> it was laughing. <laughs> How do you say it, Edward? <laughs> it's, the, it's French, actually. Cote d'Ivoire. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, got it right. <laughs> no, I mean, I said that. I, I was joking. Um, and, and Edward, how do you say this? Djibouti. There we go. I'm I'm African, but I can't get okay. Egypt. Just stop me if there's anybody. Equatorial Guinea. Eritrea. Eswatini. Ethiopia. Gabon. Gambia. Ghana. Guinea. Guinea Bissau. Kenya. Kenya. Yes, we have representation from Kenya. Kenya, yes. Hey, Sylvia, from Kenya. Yes. So let's just have a, I just want to look at the prayer points because, you know, we can go into all these different things, but if we have prayer points, we have weapons. I had a dream last night where a friend of mine was waiting for her husband at the airport and she came there dressed like a policeman. She's a, she's a pastor, but she came there dressed like a policeman. And her husband was coming through, and then she just went through all the gates, because you know you're not allowed to go through the gates and go through the different areas. You have to wait for them to come out. She just started going through, and somebody said, you know, she can do that because she's a policeman. She's a sergeant, something like that. And then I saw her take out a knife, a, a pocket knife but one of those really sharp sharp pocket knives and then somebody said she's very well trained in that 
And I thought, okay, very well trained in, in what? Is she going to kill her husband? <laughs> but she didn't. She went with this knife and she just cut away all the things that were almost surrounding him. I know their personal story. And so he's, he had, you don't know the name. So he has suffered from depression before. He has suffered from incredible, he had a nervous breakdown. And I always say like, what is, what exactly is a nervous breakdown? Do you like, ah, and then plop, and then you go to, how, how do you know? You know, do, do you just get so flat? Do you get so tired? Do you just get so worn out and broken? And so, and, and he's, he's been going through a real slump. And she spoke at a women's conference. I haven't seen her in years, but she spoke at a women's conference recently. And she said to me that the place that he's in, he is so stifled. Because after COVID, a lot of the pastors had to take reduction in salary. A lot of them had to leave. And he does the administration, um, very, very strong in administration. But he is so unhappy. And I didn't make the connection that he actually struggles. You see, just because someone goes through dips, it doesn't mean that they're not godly. If somebody goes through depression or if they go through discouragement, that doesn't mean they are not godly. And oh, let's just cast that away. Come on. Come on. We, 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 we've got to be more mature than that. And so in the Lord. And so she went with this knife and she just cut away all these things. And then I realized what it was. When I woke up, I went, Lord, what, what is that? And what, what, it, what he just dropped in my spirit, he said, that's the sword of the spirit. And so as she speaks the word of God over her husband, she can go beyond the gates. She can go beyond where anyone else can get to. She can go directly and wipe out, take away the things that are harassing him. And I sent this, I had another dream. Um, I sent this dream to Susan yesterday and I said to her, you know, what are your thoughts about it? And because I like, sometimes God will give you a vision or a dream and you can immediately, you know what it is. But there are other times where the Lord wants you to process. He wants you to ponder. He wants you to meditate on it. He wants you to seek him more. And so this particular dream, I've been, just meditating, Lord, what are you saying? And this was the dream. I'm just, I can tell you the dream very quickly, but I just want to find her, um, her response. We were in this huge area. It's, it's so, isn't it difficult to relay a dream? Because there's just so much. But we, we're in this and there are, there are explosions. Now, just by the way, when I've watched a TV show or when I've watched a movie and I have a dream, I'm very cautious the next day because very often that stuff can filter um, in. But I had not been watching TV for a couple of weeks, nothing. So it's not like I saw something. I don't get in the news. I see headlines. So I also I guard my spirit. I guard what goes in. I guard my eye gates. I, gu I guard my ear gates. But here was this, all these explosions were happening around and there were these you know, those shipping containers, everything was being smashed except this, this uh, big shipping container. And then this even bigger machine came in and broke the shipping container and smashed it and crushed it into a corner. And everything fell and broke off. And inside it was this red box, like a kist almost like an Ark of the Covenant or something like that. It was red and it had the words Jesus on it. Untouched. There wasn't a scratch on it. There wasn't a mark on it. There was nothing. Everything else was broken. There was just shambles everywhere except this box. And I was like, Lord, what is that? I mean, you know, we can kind of like think about things. And this was her reply, which I just said to her, you nailed it. She says, I think it may have to do with a lot of things these days. But my take off the top of my head is the red box is our identity in Christ. Whether individual or corporate, we must understand our identity in him. Everything else will be crushed. So for Kenya, it is about praying for deep healing 
repentance, restitution, and restoration, every single nation in Africa, the prayer points is pray for deep healing. I'm going to just go a little bit bigger on here. Is that good? Can you see that? Pray for deep healing. Yep. Re regarding the wounds caused by slavery and colonialism. That is for every single nation. Let's go to the next one. Lesotho. Anybody from Lesotho? Just by the way, I love I love Kenya. I love Kenyans. <laughs> Um, I don't know everybody from, but don't, don't know all the different nations, but yes, there are just some really, really special ones. Lesotho? No. Liberia? Libya? Madagascar? Malawi? Mali? Marish? Okay. Edward? <laughs> Mauritania. Mauritania. Thank you. Mauritius? Morocco and Western Sahara, Mozambique, Namibia, so they're very fast, Namibia, Niger, da, 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 da. Nigeria. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> oh, I love, 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 love Nigeria. Ooh, going too fast there. Okay, there we go. Let me just put my mouse there so it doesn't go do you see again pray for deep healing repentance restitution and restoration for the wounds caused by slavery and colonialism Ch church growth has been massive and remains so praise god for the millions who have come to know him in nigeria pray that the church of nigeria will fulfill jesus's prayer from john 17 to be one with him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to read all of it because I won't get through everything. I am on a time limit, and I don't want to abuse the privilege that I've been given. I want to honor you, Edward and Michael. Um, Rwanda? Ah, Edward. <laughs> How do you Sao say this? Tome. <laughs> Sao Tome and Principe. <laughs> Thank you. Senegal, Seychelles, Sierra Leone, Somalia and Somaliland, South Africa. There Oi. are a couple of... Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at this again. Now, this woman that put this together, she got this information from prayer warriors all over this continent. And I just found that on some of them, the prayer points were a bit more, not because of anything special, but I think because of all the prophetic words that have been spoken about the fire that is going to come through the southernmost tip of Africa. And it's going to go all the way through Africa with the fire of God just bringing what? Mm. Revival. But revival, you hear revival all the time. Pray for deep healing, repentance, restitution, and restoration for the wounds caused by slavery, apartheid, and colonialism. And there's um, a lot of corruption. I mean, I'm sure everybody's uh, in the news. You know, depending on the country you live in, you're so aware of the corruption or the things in your own nation. And now and again, things from other nations um, pop out. And we kind of think, yeah, but you know all about what's happening here. Uh, no, <laughs> we don't. Um, South Sudan. Sudan, Tanzania. Is it Togo or Toho? Togo. Togo. Tunisia. Uganda. Uganda, yes. We have, have a look a representation. At Also, many prayer points. Again, I'm, and I'm reading it because I, I want these words to just keep going out. Father, we just thank you for deep healing, for repentance, for restitution and restoration, for the wounds caused by slavery and colonialism. Father, we just thank you for your perfect will and plan to be done. 
I love this because there's reflection, there's a bit of history that just, has anybody seen this before, this document? No oh, praise? Yes, you saw it, Edward. Great. Praise God. Zambia? Of course you have. <laughs> Zambia? Anyone? And Zimbabwe? Uh, yes, I grew up there. <laughs> okay. In Bulawayo. Joe, you just are spread out everywhere. You South African, you 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 on the the UK watch. Look there, SA UK, and then come from Zimbabwe. You like a footprints all over. <laughs> Again, pray for deep healing, repentance, restitution, and restoration for the wounds caused by slavery and colonialism. And this is the last one, but. I just want to go, I don't want to press the wrong thing here. Here is on page 63, an entire page of racism. Now, my ancestors are from, I think the Dutch Huguenots or, or, or something like that. But in my family line, my grandfather was a politician for very right wing um, now, the right in South Africa is, is racism, used to be, pre-apartheid. It was racism, it was just oppression, it was just all those terrible things. And my great-grandfather was, was um, running a whole area, and my dad, my late dad, um, didn't want to be a part of this. And he did not want to go and serve in the military because of what was going on. And my grandfather had this huge cotton farm, this, this big cotton farm. And the people used to go and pick cotton. Now, for anybody who knows what it's like when you pick cotton, what happens to your hands? And it, it, is, it is actually quite painful. Um, you need to have the right kind of protection. But what would happen is when these people would bring their bag because they got paid for each bag, he would actually force everything right down. So they would have to do so much more. And my father was beside himself with what, you know, as a young person, you don't understand. You don't understand what's going away. And my father ran away. And he just said, I don't want any part of that. And his father rejected him, um, wrote him off, cut him off. And my father from that moment was almost like um, he had to start all over again. He was young. Um, he didn't finish school. He just said, I don't want any part of this. And he just basically disassociated himself from that. But sadly, because of what he had seen when he had grown up, when he got angry, all those things came out again. And then one day, by the grace of God, he found himself in... Um, in a church um he'd had a bit of a meltdown and they prayed and there was a great demonic um deliverance i'm not going to go into all the detail people you know have different thoughts about that but my father was a different person a different person because he had oppression and possession and all you can imagine all the the um what what I don't know what you, what if you could you I can't even think of the name now, but you know the ge generational curses and everything that he carried, and then but we we didn't have a Bible in our house growing up. There was nothing like that. Um, my father, when he got he, when he got delivered, there was only much later, and so a lot of that anger, and that aggression. I found in myself and my siblings, we were all very angry. We could easily break things and, and easily just go off the deep end. And I've had to, because there's nature and there's nurture, there's your biological DNA. And then there's your environmental DNA. You know, it's what your parents and the people around you put in you. Or you see that. I mean, there's... I had no idea how to do certain things because I never saw it. And I had to learn the hard way on so, so, so many things. And then there's your spiritual DNA, which overrides everything, but it is a process. 
when I first got saved, I thought, yay, all that stuff's gone until, you know, then I was under pressure. <laughs> and then when you squeeze toothpaste, what comes out? Toothpaste. When you squeeze a situation or a person, what comes out? And there are times I would go, oh, I can't believe it just came out of my mouth. <laughs> so um, by the grace of God, we we are a work. I am a work in progress. It's it's every day. And and I and I say to people, I'm almost done, Edward. I know we're gonna wrap up now. And I say to people, I don't like who I am. If I have not been in the word and in worship. I'm irritable. I'm impatient. Hey, guys, I'm being real. I get frustrated. All of the things, love is patient, love is kind. But what is the opposite of all of that? And I used to beat myself up all the time, memorizing 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. But just saying it is not enough. I didn't just need to revelation of uh, uh, Romans 12 verse 2. Renew your mind with the washing of the water by the word. I needed much more than that. I needed to just soak and spend time in the Lord besides deliverance, besides healing, besides renewing my mind. I need to continue in that because if I have a break, or if things go quiet for a while, when I say quiet, um, suddenly everything's a bit scratchy again and things are a bit weird, whatever. You guys are so spiritual and so perfect. You know, you, you never experience these things. <laughs> but I, I, I need, I need God. I need him. I need the Holy Spirit. I need Jesus. I need the word. I need worship. Because that is who I am. That is my true DNA. And that is what is going to change and bring healing, I believe, in this continent. Is as we allow the Lord to do that work, and it's a continual work. The only perfect person is Jesus. My husband reminds me now and again. You know, when I complain about him doing something, he goes, hmm, the only perfect person is Jesus. <laughs> oh, my darling husband. But God is good. God is good all the time. And then, so there's this long, long prayer on racism. I, I wept, but I spoke through this because of my background. I carried a lot of this stuff and I still, doesn't mean it's, the past, it's gone, it's my, no, 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 no. I still stand in the gap. I still repent. I still want to bring God's heart into this crazy world. Okay, so I'm going to just go out of here. I'm going to stop sharing. Here we go. So let's just take him. I want to just quickly pray and then just, I'm not going to do a long prayer, a very short prayer. And then Edward, I'm going to hand over to you for, for um, any questions, prayer, and not, not questions necessarily, but if, if there's people who have something to pray, if they have something to say. So Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. Oh, how we need you, Lord, how we need you. And we can talk about everything else that needs to happen. But Lord, the most important is what needs to happen in our own hearts. In our own lives, in our own minds. And seeking first the kingdom of God. And Father, just want to say, Lord, that we love you, Father, with every fiber of our being. With all of our heart. All of our soul. All of our mind. And all of our strength. Amen. Over to you, Edward. Shirley, can you put Amen. that on the Africa Watch, the link for the, what you've shared? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Shirley. You can share the, the PDF in the chat. 
thank you as well for opening up, uh, sharing those, some of the things you struggle with. And I'm sure we all, we all have those, and your husband said it well, that the only perfect person is Jesus. It's a very good reminder. And uh, the, the, the thing of healing for Africa is, is key. We thank God for this message. And also knowing that the only person who brings this healing is Jesus. Political efforts may, may try, but we can see that they haven't been successful. Foreign aid, uh, investment, and any effort without Jesus will, will be futile. So we continue uh, praying because he is the key to the restoration of Africa, but for any nation, it is in him. So we'll open it up to, to prayer responses. Already Margaret and Ray have their hand up. Over to you, Margaret. I really want to thank you for sharing um, this 50 words, their prayer and all you shared. And actually what I would like to do is I would like to repent because Malta being the center of the Mediterranean Sea, we had a slave trading. They brought slaves here in Malta in the time of the night and they were sold from the then capital city of Valletta. And my heart is wrenched as I hear all this. Um, as you said, to pray for deep healing, repentance, restitution, rest restoration, wounds caused by slavery and colonialism. So uh, I feel I want to stand in the gap for our nation because it brings curses on us. This is not righteous at all. And um, our family lines, both my husband and my son, we were involved in the, our surname. We were involved in what they called Anguzini, which means they helped the night and they got a percentage um, for selling the trades, which uh, we have repented as a family line. But I want to repent as my country. So Father, in front of my brothers and sisters, Lord God, especially of Africa, Lord God, today, we come to you, Father. And we say how sorry, truly sorry we are that we have caused all this pain to our brothers and sisters in Africa. Lord, this is not righteous. We are so sorry, Lord. We ask you to restore to them a hundredfold of what they have lost, to heal them in their emotional bodies, Lord God, in their spiritual bodies, in their, in their physical bodies, to heal them and restore them back to health, that they may know their true identity in you as the, as the vision, as the dream that Shirley had, that red box. Our identity, the identity of Africa cannot be touched when we are in Christ, when they are in Christ. It cannot be touched. So, Father, we pray for the restoration also of identity for Africa in Christ Jesus, because then it will not be shaken. But, Father, we, we also pray that they will um, persevere and not be disheartened. Father, we thank you for the restoration. We thank you for your healing for Africa. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We bless you, Africa. Amen. 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 <laughs> thank you, Margaret. Uh, Charlie, you, you want to respond? I've got to get in the queue, you know. I've got to put my hand up. I can't just <laughs> type it back in. I want to show you something on my on my desktop. I don't know if this is a mirror, 
because you can decide do you want a mirror reflection of your uh, zoom um, if you can, you can read everything. If not, everything's back to front, but you'll get an idea. I'm going to just do this. This is my mouse pad. So, and everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. And right in the middle, um, you see, that's why I have a little iPad here so I can see what you see. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, let's do that. All right, there we go. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there we are that is africa just have a look at this guys right in the center and yesterday i mean this is my mouth this is what i what i work with every single day and when i looked at this yesterday after i got the message from edward i was like africa and i have to tell you something funny sorry sorry um, i'm just digressing for a minute my cat sometimes gets hairballs you know about hairballs you know when they shed and then, and then the next minute they go, ooh, 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 and then they, you know, it's a hairball kind of thing. And the one day I came in here and there was, the cat had a hairball right on the country of China. And I, I, I thought, Lord, this could just be a coincidence. But it's like, you know, for those of you who are seers and, and vision, you know, it's actually quite funny that there was like a hairball for whatever that means. Anyway. That, sorry, that's just a joke. That's on the side. Um, uh, Chanel, maybe you want to cut that part out. But I just felt the Lord saying when I looked at this, that Africa is in the center of God's perfect will. I'm not going to try and say things into that, but Africa is in the center of God's perfect will. Amen. 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 Uh, Hilary has something to say, but after Hilary, I'll ask uh, Pastor Michael to close us off in prayer, but also to receive the repentance as Sister Margaret has shared and to speak release and blessing for Malta and, and all those other nations. Uh, we, we act like Joseph when his brothers sold him to slavery and he got a chance to meet them, he forgave them. And that is what Africa has been called to do as well. Hilary, briefly, then Pastor Michael. Thank you. I was just, I grew up in England. So I felt, I know there's been a lot of repentance, but Heavenly Father, you know the wounds, the hurts that still remain there the generational curses that have come through what happened with the British colonialism. And we again bring these to your cross. And we say, Lord Jesus Christ, as you gave promises in Jeremiah 29, that after a certain number of years, 70 years of exile, you would bring your people back to Jerusalem. You have plans also for Africa as they've been faithful. And that Lord, I pray for Isaiah 54 to become reality for Africa. They would know your covenant of peace. They would know your anger is removed from them. They would know that you are their husband and you are there to bless them and be faithful to them. And that no weapon forged against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And even as you spoke to your people, Israel in Jeremiah 29, 11, your thoughts to your people of Africa are of peace, not of evil, to give you each nation a hope and a future. And I call the people, the believers of Africa, to come up higher, to come up into that Revelation 4.1 place of ascendancy seated with Christ Jesus. You say, if you will call upon me, I will listen to you. And I, as you seek me uh, with all your heart, I will be found by you. So I, I put this call out to those in Africa who've been enslaved and wounded and now being set free and restored and say, put your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his beautiful face. Listen to his voice and follow his ways and become the true transcendent new creation identity and destiny that Jesus has prepared for you before creation, according to Ephesians 2.10, individually 
and corporately in your nations. I bless you with this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, we want to really say a very big thank you, uh, Sister Shani. Thank you for bringing us that uh, very, very prophetic word. Uh, and um, also, thank you for that prayer also, uh, Margaret, um, on behalf of the continent of Africa, as watchmen of God, upon this continent, we will uh, prophetically receive that act of repentance, and we also uh, pray that the Lord will bring a uh, genuine and true healing for all of us. Um, let us pray as we pray to close our time together. Let's pray. Father, we come before you to say a very big thank you, Lord, for all of these memories of what has transpired in the history of the continent of Africa through colonialism, uh, slave trade, and all of these atrocities that have been done by our brothers and our sisters from the other parts of the regions of the world. Our Father, we know, Lord, that if they are known better, probably they will have done things differently. So, Lord, on behalf of the continent of Africa, we receive, oh Lord, uh, the the, the repentance and the the, 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 the the act of God of humility and the seeking of forgiveness, oh Lord, for these uh, brothers who have brought all of these pain and these uh, challenges to the continent of Africa. We ask, Lord, that you will show mercy to each and every one of us as we receive their forgiveness on behalf of this continent. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that whatever impact Oh Lord, slave trade has had, O oh God, upon the life of Africans, whatever impact, O oh Lord, colonialism has had and is still having on the continent of Africa. O oh Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you break that struggle, O oh God, and bring genuine and thorough healing, O oh Lord, on this continent of Africa. That Africa will be healed, Africa will be restored to our redemptive heritage in God. The Africa, O oh Lord, will arise, O oh God, among the nations of the earth, fulfill a prophetic place in God's agenda, especially in this end time. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, also for all the nations, O oh Lord, that are part participated one way or the other in all of this issue of slavery, of colonialism, of oppression, of a mental dream, whatever it could be. Our Father, we ask for mercy and for forgiveness for them, O oh God, that you will forgive and be gracious. For all of these people, or all of these nations, Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, if there be any impact, O oh Lord, that their uh, activities in those days have had, even upon them themselves, oh Lord, we ask that you please forgive and bring healing even to all of these nations of the earth that have participated in slavery, colonialism, oppression, and all forms of uh, atrocities uh, in Africa. And oh Lord, for us ourselves as Africans, we ask the Lord for grace. The Lord will we indeed, O Lord, uh, be fully liberated from all the curses of harm that have brought this continent under oppression and all that has opened the gate of oppression, colonialism, corruption, and all these vices on the continent of Africa. Lord, we ask for your healing balm. The world says that the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Lord, we ask, O Lord, that the healing of God will flow from the north to the south of Africa from the east to the west of Africa, from the central of Africa to the islands of Africa. Lord, we ask for more for the release of your healing bow right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask for God, if there be any of us on this hour right now as we're having this meeting right now, and there is pain in the heart of any of us as we receive healing for the continent of Africa. Father, we ask for right now, Lord, for healing for each and every one of us on this hour. And we're talking of you being the Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. Heal every heart of wounds. Heal every heart of disappointment and, and, and unforgiveness. Heal heart, every heart, O oh Lord, on this call right now. From every pain of disappointment in the name of either marital pain or, or, or financial pain or family pain, whatever it is that stands for or ministry pain, I ask right now for the healing power of the Lord on every single one of us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like us all to unmute right now 
as we receive the benediction. Let's all meet as we receive the benediction. And for because we have come to the presence of the Most High God at this hour to fellowship in his holy and precious presence, to intercede and to bring our supplication before the Lord. I pray that the Lord who hears and answers prayer, may he hear us, may he give answer to our prayer exceedingly and abundantly, far above all we can ask to think in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, may the Lord God bless you. Amen. 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 And may the Lord God keep you. May the Lord give you his face to shine upon you, the grace of Amen. Amen. the light of his countenance upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Blessing. Bye. Thank you. 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 Bye. God bless you, brother. God bless you. I don't leave until you leave. <laughs>